Tonight you're going to learn how to find the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of an acute angle. And you're going to use trigonometric ratios to find, so, uh, find side lengths in right triangles and solve real life problems. Um, you need to look up these vocabulary terms, press pause, go to the internet and look up your vocabulary terms and write the definitions here on your notes. Remember the angle-angle similarity postulate? Alright, if you have a right triangle and a given acute angle is similar to every other right triangle with that same acute angle by angle-angle, so you know if the triangles are similar, which they are in this picture because they all have one right angle in one acute angle of 32 degrees, so that would be similar by the angle-angle postulate. Then your sides are proportional, so you would know that BC would be proportional to AC, and EF would be the same proportional as DF, and YZ would have the same proportion as XZ. These are called trigonomet trigonometric ratios, and a trigonometric ratio is just a ratio or a fraction of the two sides of a right triangle. And these are your uh, rules. You've got your definition of sine is the ratio of the length of the leg opposite of the acute angle to the length of the hypotenuse. And it's written like this. Opposite leg over hypotenuse, whether you're looking at angle A or you're looking at angle B. The definition of cosine is the ratio or the fraction of the length of the leg adjacent to the angle to the hypotenuse, which again, you would have your definitions here. And the tangent is the ratio or the fraction of the length of the leg opposite to the angle to the length of the leg adjacent to the angle. Now we usually do use a, a abbreviation called Sukkotoa. S is for sine. O is opposite, H is hypotenuse, that's the abbreviation for sine, C is for cosine, A is for adjacent, H is for hypotenuse, T stands for tangent, O is for opposite, and A is for adjacent. So that's an easy way to remember the definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent by Sakatoa. In trig, the letter of the vertex, and that's the corner at your angle. Uh, the angle is often used to represent the measure of that angle. For example, the sine of angle A is written as sine A. So here are examples. Um, write the trigonometric ratio as a fraction and as a decimal rounded to the nearest hundred. That would be two decimal places. So if we wanted to find the sine of J, remember Sekatoa? So if we want to find the sine, we're going to use this part of Sekatoa. We want to identify angle J, that would be here. So the leg opposite angle J would be 60 and the hypotenuse would be 61 and then all you would need to do is get your calculator out and find the decimal 100 would be 0 point and you need two di digits get your calculator out now and uh, get the decimal equivalent press pause Same way with example 1b, this time we want to write the ratio as a fraction and a decimal rounded to the nearest hundredth. So we're going to find cosine j. Again, we're going to use Sakatoa. Since we're doing cosine, we'll use this part of Sakatoa. That's telling us to find angle j, which is there. 
and get the adjacent side, which would be 11 because it's touching angle J, over the hypotenuse, which would still be 61. Again, if we want to write the decimal, it's going to be 0 0.2 digits. Get your calculator out, press pause, and find the decimal. Example 1C, again, write the trigonometric ratio as a fraction and as a decimal rounded to the nearest hundredth. This time we're finding tangent K, so we have to remember Sakatoa again. If we want to find tangent, we're going to use this part of Sakatoa. So that's telling us O is for opposite, angle, J, angle K this time. So opposite would be 11, and adjacent, A stands for adjacent, would be 60. And to write the decimal, you get your calculator out and find the decimal. Remember, hundredth means two decimal places. Okay, here's for you to do. Write the trigonometric ratio as a fraction as a decimal rounded to the nearest hundred. This time we want to do cosine A. So we're going to use our Sakatoa. Cosine tells us to use this part of Sakatoa. Identify angle A. So adjacent to A would be 24 and H stands for hypotenuse that would be 25 How are you telling me? and if you want to write the decimal to the nearest center you need to get your calculator out and divide alright check it out example 1b this time write the ratio as a fraction and a decimal rounded to the nearest hundredth, find tangent B. So we got to use Sakatoa. For finding tangent, we're going to use this part. We're going to use tangent B. Here's angle B. O stands for opposite, so opposite would be 24. And A stands for adjacent, so adjacent would be 7. We need to get our calculator out and find our decimal. Press pause. Example 1C. Write the trigonometric ratio as a fraction and a decimal rounded to the nearest hundredth. Find sine B. So we want to use Sakatoa. If we want to find sine, we got to use this part of Sakatoa. It says to find sine B, so locate integral B. So it tells us to use O as opposite. That would be 24. And H stands for hypotenuse. That would be 25. If we want to find the decimal round to the nearest hundredth, we would get our calculator out and make sure you have two decimal spaces.